Well, I think everybody knows who I am. Uh, Brian Winger from the Wyoming Department of Transportation. Just wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, Wyoming's equipment program. We have 22 repair shops throughout the state, 100 technicians. We have uh, 4,100 assets that we take care of. Of those, 1,100 are light duty. Uh, 287 of those are patrol cars. 350 tandem axle trucks, 47 single axle, currently seven tow plows, and we build our own snow plows in-house. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you today about uh, building our own trucks in-house. We've been doing it for a while. That's some of our first trucks and some of our first trucks with wing plows. Anyway, just a kind of an overview of our fabrication shop. It's a little on the small side, but we have eight fabricators in it. At full capacity, we can do about 25 trucks a year. Currently, we're using the Force America 6100 system and the Wayland lighting package. Uh, we want run a rear engine PTO uh, to run our hydraulic package, run a couple different pumps depending whether it's a standard truck or a tow plow. Uh, our standard plows are 425 horse and our tow plows are uh, 500 to 525 depending on manufacturer. So that's just a picture of our fabrication shop on the outside. A couple years ago with the bay all the way to the left was actually a paint booth originally but we were having trouble bringing it up to code so we built a paint booth onto the side so we can get a, a plow in there and do painting and uh, whatever we need to. There's kind of an inside view of our uh, rigging shop. We can we have six truck building bays, and then the view on the right is actually our old paint booth, and that's where we upfit our spreaders. So we just pretty much start with the standard uh, tandem axle truck. We do a 201 uh, stainless steel 13 foot dump box. Picture of our spreaders with legs, and we just get a hydraulic package in and go to work. We use um, several different uh, plow variations, probably like most of you. We recently acquired a new computer controlled plasma table, which has sped up our process quite a bit. Uh, the picture on the right are new Mac trucks that we're building. This is a bracket that mounts the force lighting package to the back wall, so we're not drilling any holes in the truck. Everything bolts up. Once we get the initial one built, we cut sheets of them, paint them, and it just uh, Im improves our production greatly. We have our, it's kind of small, but our own in-house machine shop where we fabricate a lot of our repair parts and just do different stuff. Here's a picture of our, uh, we build our own sander chains, replacement sprockets for our spreaders. We do our own hydraulic tanks. We have a local machine shop, bend the tank halves, and then we TIG weld them together, test them and paint them. We're a little different from most states building our trucks. We do as many stainless steel hard lines as we possibly can. So this kind of shows you how we, we route a lot of our hydraulics. And this kind of shows how we route them down the side of the, the spreader. Uh, just kind of showing our lighting package on the back. We do run the one blue light on the right, but pretty much everything that we put on these trucks, we've uh, went to doing everything in stainless steel just to, to increase the longevity of it. Just kind of showing some of our upfit process, you know, welding hitches on, building our wing mounts. As soon as we get a sub assembly built, we'll take it back into the shop, paint it, run all of our wiring, our own light brackets and different stuff. We have kind of followed the OEM. Any uh, wiring that we install now, instead of putting it in the plastic convoluted tubing, we're running the woven wire insulation. We wrap it with the, looks like hockey tape, basically we wrap our loom in that. But what we've kind of done is taken it a step farther and everything that we do, the only loom color we use is orange. So anything we install on a vehicle is in a different color loom than the OEM. So when it's out in the field and it needs service, it's easy to identify what's OEM wiring and what's aftermarket wiring. That kind of shows how we mount our hydraulic pump too. 
uh, since we run a rear engine PTO, it has to be you know powered or driven through a drive shaft. So we build guards just in case. We run a a, uh, a solid U joint, non greasable U joint. So there's no servicing. But if we ever do have a failure, these drive shafts contain the drive shaft, so it doesn't tear anything up. These are the new Easy Connector electrical connectors that we're using. I don't know if any other states have went to these. They're a magnetic plug. So they, they self-clock when you put them in, but they magnetically connect. We run the 14 connector, so through one plug to our spreader, it'll run all of the uh, feedback for the spreader and all the lights through one, one connector. And then when we, you can kind of see it here, the way we mount it at a little bit of an angle, if for whatever reason that does not get disconnected when they lift the spreader, it'll unplug itself and there's no damage to it and from easy connector uh, when you place the order they will pre-install the cable at whatever length you want so it's already sealed it's already ready to go you just do your final termination at whatever length you want they've been you know a phenomenal connector no issues how long yeah like three winters okay and that again kind of shows our our hydraulics package how we we try to keep our you know flexible hoses as short as we possibly can run everything uh, stainless steel prevent lines kind of shows how we do our cab controls we've went to you can see on the left our force america hydraulic controls we build a mount that bolts to the bottom of the air seat and then from that bracket to the high to the Hydraulic controls, it's on a ram mount to where the operator can move it side to side, back and forth, whatever's comfortable with him. But with the air seats now, the controls move with the driver and they feel it's a lot more comfortable. And like you say, then they can kind of position it wherever it's comfortable for them. And then on the back wall, you can kind of see behind the, the switch panel, that plate, that's one that we fabricated. Just makes installation real simple. So it's right between the two seats. So they just kind of turn around a little bit and it just keeps the cab pretty clean. This here is a, just a pedestal that we built to mount all of our radio equipment to. And this just kind of shows some of the finished product. Probably like most of you guys, when, when we're building these trucks, batteries, boxes need to be moved, air tanks need to be moved. You know, we just try to repackage it as cleanly as we possibly can. It's kind of a picture of a parallel left front hitch. I mean, we end up welding all those together. We use the Stuky connector, flat face connectors. We use the same one on the front plow as we do on the, the spreader. How long have you been using those? Uh, those connectors, probably five or six years. They're expensive, but we've had really good luck with them. They connect under pressure. They're just a real nice connector. And you can kind of see from our, you know, our hydraulic tank, uh, one of the things that we really like about doing the rear engine PTO is our, we have very few pump issues because the pump's always flooded from the tank. No pump issues because it's always running in hydraulic oil. Picture of a completed truck. That's our last batch we're max that we're working on now. Parallel left front, front plow. So cost to build a truck. Our last batch of trucks come in just over 93,000. Uh, just under 11,000 for a dump box, hydraulic controls at 21, lighting package 35, uh, 12.5 for a spreader, front plow, that's the most expensive one that we run, uh, just under 15, 4,000 for a wing. Uh, our upfit materials, all of our plumbing, everything that we uh, used to build a truck runs about twelve thousand dollars it total for everything uh, building the truck the spreader upfitting what little bit we do on the wing everything we have about 380 hours in it just under twenty one thousand dollars worth of labor total cost to build a truck we come in at just under hundred ninety three thousand for a truck since we do all of our own builds in-house it gives us a little flexibility to do custom stuff this is actually one of our transport trucks with a fifth wheel in it that we built a slide-in spreader. 
<laughs> so attaches to the fifth wheel. Attaches to the fifth wheel, and then they, they tie it down. So you know they can they could use it for multiple different applications. No, that that, that all comes pre-assembled. We don't. We've pretty much got it to where the only thing we add is the hydraulics to the truck once it comes in and the lighting. Right now, the what we've checked doing the, I think these are 409 stainless. It's cheaper to do the 409 painted than the 201 non-painted stainless, at least when we've asked for quotes. I'm talking about the color of your cab. We don't get charged extra for it, so until we do, we'll probably stick with, with yellow on the trucks. We went to white on our light duty fleet just because uh, availability, we get the trucks faster and I think Ford was charging us $800 a truck when, we, when they switched a couple years ago for the yellow. So we switched to white on the light duty fleet, but until they charge us more, we'll probably stick with this color. Our guys come up with kind of a, a different way of plumbing our tow plow trucks. Our first several that we did, we run all the hydraulics up the frame rail and the connection was up underneath the rear of the, the tow plow for the hydraulics. So one of our guys said, well, we run hydraulics down the driver's side to run the, the plow or the sander itself. Why don't we run the hydraulics down the other side to run the tow plow? So this is kind of what he comes come up with. So this is actually on the passenger side. You can see all the hydraulics coming off just like you would on the opposite side. And the picture here is showing what's on the back of the spreader. When it's installed, you can kind of see how the, the hydraulic lines run up the right side of the spreader. And then the connection is so much easier on the rear because it's not underneath the truck anymore. So that's just kind of a, another picture of it coupled up. And then the hydraulics are here instead of crawling underneath the truck to do the, the coupling. It seems to have worked really well. One thing that we were able to do too, once the snow plow is built, since we do it all in house, all of our fabricators are also CDL holders like most of the mechanics. So usually two of them go out to the field, deliver the truck to the end user, and then we can do hands-on operator training with the uh, maintenance guys in the field. What's really good about that is we get a great amount of feedback from those maintenance guys as end users and we're able to implement some of their ideas directly into what we're building. And with that line of communication, if they have issues, they're willing to call in and you know give their feedback. And then sometimes some of that feedback, you can explain why we don't do things, you know, everything the, the way they want to do. And a lot of times, you know, when the guy that builds a truck explains it to them, it makes more sense than just say, no, we don't do it that way. It's worked out really well. And just a couple of our, a couple of pictures of our, some of our stuff in action. Nowhere as cool as Brad's pictures, but that's it. Any questions? They're extremely proud of what they do. And I mean, it's, it's hard to see it from the pictures, but those hydraulic lines, when they bend them, it's a work of art. I mean, they, they do enough of them, they get super good at it. But, you know, I, I think it's a little more labor intensive. I think the cost probably ends up being about the same. The stainless steel line as opposed to, you know, running hydraulic hoses the whole way. I think it's kind of a trade off there. But those lines, they last the life of the truck. Unless you get into an accident and hit something or somebody steps on one, we very seldom ever have to replace the hydraulic line. So. And it kind of acts as a heat sink too. Our hydraulics never get hot. How long does it take you to build the truck? Uh, the total with everything, the spreader, uh, everything 380 hours. And I think what helps us a little bit too is our loaded lab labor rate is pretty low. We're at $55 an hour. Yeah, which, and I was extremely surprised. I, I thought that that was, was crazy low, but when, yeah, when we run all the reports, it's, it's actually only $53.50 or something like that, but pretty low. Anything else? Cool. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.